Oh, praise the Lord. So glad to have you with us here at, at God's Got a Plan. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endure to all generations. You know, we've just finished, just made it through a Easter a weekend, a, a Resurrection Sunday, and just so blessed to be able to, to move in a, in a way where as we realize that we don't have to live in our past, we can keep on let's just say striving and growing, maturing, developing into those men and women that God would have us to be. You know, today I want to bring you something a little bit different. And please, if you, uh, at the start of the show, I'm going to ask you to get a pencil and paper handy because at the end of this telecast, I want to share some information with you in reference to a, a little prayer line that I started. And you might want to join me on that some mornings, okay? So get that pencil and paper and let's get ready and get into the word and see what God has to say to us today. Uh, my theme today is the truth. You can't live without it. The truth. You can't live without it. Coming out of the book of John, chapter eight, verse 32. And it says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And it's the truth, you know, free at last, free at last. Good God Almighty, I'm free at last. Why? Because I'm operating in the truth. When you're operating in the truth, you're going to find that freedom. You're going to find that peace, that comfort. More than that, you're going to be wrapped in God's love. Why? Because, as a matter of fact, look at John 14 and 6. John 14 and 6, Jesus says this. He says, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father, being God, but by him. So you have to know Jesus. And who is Jesus? Jesus is the truth. And, you know, he's the way, he's the truth, and he's the life. So we're thanking God today. And, Father, we just want to thank you today for the leading of your spirit. Lord God, you said it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, Lord God, you would lead us into revelation. So, Father God, I pray that you would just prick our hearts today, Lord God. Open up our, eye, our minds to receive just what you're saying to us today in your word. Oh, God, I pray you would put your stamp of approval on this message today and allow yourself to be glorified. All this we ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. And you shall know the truth. Meaning, that's what you have to know. You have, and the truth is something you're going to have to pursue. You're going to have to pursue the truth. This isn't something that's just going to drop on you because you have to realize, first and foremost, you're living in a fallen world. And the information out here is designed to push the truth out of you or to block you from getting the truth. So you're going to have to pursue the truth if you want to be able so let's just say come online with what God is now doing in the world, in your community, in your church, in your home, in your environment. What he even wants to do in you. Understand now, God wants you to operate in his truth. Why? Because it's the truth and only the truth that's going to set you free. And my God, my God, too many of us in the church, out of the church, abound. Why? Because we're trying to do things on our own, trying to make things happen the way we think it should happen. And we're not going to God and asking God for some direction, for some guidance, for some support, some help. Sometimes all we got to do is just say help, just H-E-L-P, help. Throw your hands up, surrender, yield, and understand that he's the one that can make a way out of no way. And if you find yourself stuck between a rock and a hard place, I'm here to tell you today now, God loves you so much, he won't leave you there. And I can say that. Why? Because there's been some people in your life who has promised you they would be there for you. They would support you in your endeavors. 
They would be there if something goes wrong and so on and so forth. But when you found yourself at that place where you needed some help, you couldn't find them. So I'm here to tell you today now, it's, it's, it's about coming to that place in your life when you realize it is the Lord that you have to trust in. You know, look at John 15 and 26. John 15 and 26 says this, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father. And now we're talking about the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. See, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. And, God's, and, 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 and the Lord says he will send the comforter to you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeds from the Father. He shall testify of me, meaning the Holy Spirit is going to tell you about Jesus. See, the Holy Spirit is not given to you to make himself look good. The Holy Spirit is given to you to bring you into all truth, to bring you into a, a knowledge of God, a deeper understanding of God. He's the paraclete. He's the one that will come alongside you to help you fulfill the mission, the assignment, the call that is on your life. I believe, in, I believe Paul says in Ephesians, walk worthy of the vocation. There's a call on your life. And if you're not operating in the truth, guess what? You're not going to be able to make that thing happen. And God didn't bring you into the kingdom for you to be a failure. God wants you to succeed. He wants you to succeed. Why? Because that's what God is about. He's a winner. He's looking for winners today. He want to be able to put you up on his mantle. He want to show you off to the world. He want to let a, a dying world know about a living Savior. That's what we're here to do, to let a dying world know about a living Savior. Oh, I just love the Lord. I don't know about you, but I, I just, I mean, every day you want to fall in love with him over and over and over again. And this is why it's so important that we stay near to the truth. You know, I believe the Bible says those of us, uh, that diligently seek him. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You know, you know, and I, I don't know where you're at today, but I can tell you your situation can change if you're not at a good place. I'm here to tell you today that there's a God sitting high looking low. The Bible says the earth is his footstool. So he's still in control of everything going on down here. And he's also able to be in control of what's going on in your life but he will never force himself on you. You have to invite him in. You have to submit, surrender, and you have to yield to the truth and understand that it's only the truth that will set you free. John 16 and 13 says, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. You see, he will guide you. We need a guide. Lord Jesus, we need a guide. You know, if you was to go to Europe, if you was to go to, you know, one of the islands, the Caribbeans or wherever, so on and so forth, you know, being a visitor, you don't really know the happenings and where, you know, the, the, the sites that should be seen and so on and so forth. And you don't want to get off course and go someplace where it's not safe. And this is why when you go to these different countries, you know, you want a guide, someone that's going to take you to those places so you can sightsee and still be safe. And that's what this is about. The Holy Spirit He's going to guide you. He's going to lead you into the truth. He's going to comfort you when you need to be comforted, but he's going to instruct you when you need to be instructed. So I, I realize that apart from God, I can do nothing, but with him, all things are possible. See, God want to bring you into that realm of the impossible. You know, the Bible says, is there anything too hard for God? Well, I'm here to tell you today, saints, there's nothing too hard for God. Whatever it is you're struggling with, whatever it is you're trying to get through, trying to pass through or go around or climb over, I'm here to tell you, nothing is too hard with God. And all you have to do, matter of fact, Scripture tells us to cast all our cares upon him because he cares for us. That care means he loves you deeply. He loves you deeply, and he want to do a new thing in your life. And that's what this is about. So this is why we have to be in right relationship with the loving God. We have to be able to come into a knowledge of his word because his word is truth. His word is life. And the Lord wants to give you 
his life. He wants you to know him, not know about him. Too many of us know about him. And I know the Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. But I still need to come to that place where I know him for myself. You don't want to mimic. You don't want to be a, a, a parrot what, talking behind what someone else may have said. You want to get into that word. You want to talk to him in prayer. And you want a direct link with God between you and him. I want God to talk to me like he's talking to so-and-so, like he's talking to Sister Butterbean, like he's talking to brothers, whatever. You want God to talk directly to you. And that's what relationship is all about because God wants to give you his truth because he wants you to walk in the power of his might. You know, and, and, and look what he says. Let me finish that verse of scripture. Because he says, the spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he shall show you things to come. Your future is a mystery to you. You don't know what's going, you don't know what to expect. That's why so many are living in fear. Double-minded and doubting and worrying and fearful. Why? Because you don't have a clue of what to expect tomorrow. And if based upon my past, Lord Jesus, and, and God brought us out of some stuff, not to take us back in it. So understand your, your future has not been written yet, but you're going to have to be able to let go of your past. The hurt, the pain, the shame, the doubt, the worry, the fear anything that would be contrary to that word of God. Because Jesus says, I come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Oh, I'm here to tell you now, he want to bless your socks off. Can you stand to be blessed? Can you stand to be blessed? Well, you'll, you'll be blessed when you operate in the truth. And this is why we have to get up under that word. We have to get in a Bible teaching church and a fellowship. And we have to be able to, matter of fact, scripture says, don't forsake. You might be out there backslidden. You might be out there wishy-washy. Every now and then I feel like going to church. I, I, I use the church like it's a health spa or a club or something, and I'll go when I feel like it. No, you have to be committed to this. Yeah, you got to understand, you have to take control of this flesh that don't want to do right, don't want to do what God would have you do. You know that there's something you're missing. You know there's a missing part, a missing piece to the puzzle. Well, I'm here to tell you that missing piece is Christ, the truth that will set you free. Free at last, free at last. And that's what God want to do. He want to bring you into all knowledge of the truth because that's what's going to make us winners. Oh, my God, you want to be a winner today and not a loser. Look at 2 Corinthians 13 and 8. 2 Corinthians 13 and 8 says this, For you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. See, you can't work against the truth, because the truth is the truth. And there's only the truth that will set you free. So, you know, we have to see that we have to have a foundation. You know, that's why the Bible says, train up a child in the way they're to grow. And when they get older, they won't depart from it. But we know that we want to experience things in the world and the lights and the glitter and the this and the that. And we sometimes step away and we get entangled and meshed in stuff that we shouldn't get entangled in. And we know better. So what am I saying? We will turn our back on the truth. We will turn our back on the word. But this is why, you know, it's just so good to know that we have a a loving savior who will never turn his back on, on you. He will never turn his back on you, even though you have turned your back on him. Isn't it good to know that? Because we know, my God, you treat you know, people that way, they're going to say, oh, I ain't going to deal with you no more. And how many times have we you know, turned our backs on friends and on family and on people that we say we love? And, and I mean... You got to work hard to get back in right standing with them. But I'm talking about a loving God that once you confess your sin and ask for forgiveness, the Bible says he will throw your sin in the sea of forgetfulness, never to bring it back up on you anymore. And, you know, there's some people we may have hurt and did wrong against so on and so forth. And what has happened is 
you know, they say, okay, I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to bury it and so on and so forth. Don't worry. I'm not going, okay, I forgive you. It's okay. But then a week later, they pull that shovel out and they start digging that thing up, boy. And then they want to throw it back up in your face. See, I'm talking about a God that won't throw your past in your face. I'm talking about a God that's trying to get you to step into your future. Now, he's not going to push you there because he's not going to force you there. He wants you to know that what he's offering you is life. He's offering you truth. He's offering you a way out of that hurtful past. And he want to bring you into a place where you can see, my God, life is worth living. Oh, we should, we should want to experience the better part of life the better part of life. And sometimes we can make that wrong turn. We can pick up that something that will take us in a direction away from the blessing. And we can hook up with the wrong people that will take us away from the blessing. What am I talking about? Taking us away from the truth. And you don't want to live in a counterfeit world. You don't want to live in an alternate reality. You want to live in the real world. The real world is life. The real world is love. The real world is truth. Why? Because that's where God is. That's where Jesus is. And apart from him, you can do nothing. But with him, all things are possible. You know, we here at God's Got a Plan, we love you. And we want you to succeed. And we're not here to take the place of your church or anything like that. But we're here to let's just say, to encourage you, to support you, to give you a little something extra because, hey, after you eat a good meal, you want a little bit of cake, you want some ice cream, you want a little dessert or something like that. Well, take this as, as some dessert. And whatever you, however you want to use this, this is what's going to make you feel a whole lot better. This is what's going to help you to be able to see your world lighten up, brighten up. You know, because too many times and too many people have gone to church, and you can sit in church on Sunday from, I mean, you know, you go in church early in the morning and leave there late in the afternoon and still haven't changed. So you want to be able to get that something that's going to really motivate you to doing something. Because God, like I said earlier, God didn't bring you in to the kingdom for you to be a loser. And whatever God has called you to, he's going to equip and he's going to enable you to do it. So you have to have that God kind of faith to believe. Look at Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. And look what it says. Oh, foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Are you obeying the truth? Are you living? Are you walking in the truth? And I, especially those of us who are in the church now. Those of us who have confessed Christ now, this is a walk that we should be taking. And we should be walking this walk, not just talking the talk, because we can talk a good talk. But until our walk can line up with our talk, and I like to say this, people are looking to see what you're saying. I'm going to say that again. People are looking to see what you're saying, because we can talk that talk, oh, how I love Jesus. But if you love him so much, why are you acting like that? If you love him so much, why are you complaining so much? See, the Bible says that, you know, we don't have to complain. Matter of fact, when Jesus was going to the cross, the Bible says he never said a mumbling word. And if anybody had a reason to complain, he had a reason to complain. Because he even said to his daddy, Father, why have thou forsaken me? Because he didn't know life without him. I'm going to say that again. Jesus had never experienced life without his father's presence. And when he took on the sins of the world, when he took on your sin and my sin, he had to cry out, Father, why have thou forsaken me? In other words, that was traumatic to him. Why? Because he was always in fellowship with his dad, with his Abba father. And you should want to be in fellowship with your father. You should want to have a closer walk with Jesus. You should want to know him, not just in the pardoning of your sins, but you should want to know him. You should want to be in a loving relationship with him. Look at that, that second verse of that same scripture. And he says, matter of fact, let me finish reading that. For obey the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ have been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Are you so foolish? Are you so foolish, 
having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect in the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? In other words, all that stuff you done been through, you mean to tell me that, wow, it was in vain? All that hurt, all that pain, all of that stuff that was designed to, to break a brother down, break a sister down, bring divorce, bring separation, bring alcohol. I mean, hey, and God has brought you back from the brinks, the brink of death, the brink of destruction, the brink of self-mutilization. We have done some hurtful things to people and to ourselves, but the Lord has made a way out of no way, and he's brought you back, saints. So don't, don't be foolish. You don't have to live foolish making bad choices and decisions over your life. Why? Because the Bible says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. And that's what we have to do today. We need the acts of God who gives liberally without reproach. In other words, he's not going to be a respecter of persons. He's not a respecter of persons. So if you can diligently seek him, he's going to reward you for your diligence. He's going to reward you for your pursuit of him. Oh, I'm a God chaser today, and that's what this is about. You want to come into the knowledge of who you are and understand that who you are is who God would have you to be when you're operating, when you're walking in the truth. Oh, my God. And too many of us want to stand on that thing about, well, the Lord knows I'm not perfect. Well, that's right. You ain't telling no lie. You're not telling no story. You're not perfect. But if you carry Christ Jesus in you, if he's abiding in you, see, he's perfect. And it's not about you being perfect. It's about carrying the one who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what you can ask or think according to the power that would be in you. And that power is faith to believe that your God can do anything but fail. God want to bless you, saints. He want to bless you. But you have to operate in the truth. Let me give you this last verse of scripture. This last verse of scripture, John 4 and 23. But the hour has come, and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The true worshipers. See, you're not going to be able to be a true worshiper until you're operating in the truth. You see, because now you're operating not from your flesh, but you're operating from the spirit. The true worshiper. For the Father seeks such to worship him those of us that would worship him in truth, in spirit and in truth. You know, you don't want to bring that flesh into this relationship that you have with God. We have to be able to deny ourselves, deprive ourselves, and we have to be able to make whatever adjustments we need to make so that we can come online with God's will and understand that all things are working together for the good. Eternal Father, I just want to thank you today, Lord God, for the leading of your spirit. Lord God, you said it's not by might and it's not by power. So, Father God, I pray your blessing even now upon the viewer. I pray even now, Father God, that you would, uh, you, you, you would, let's just say, ignite that fire of truth that's within your people, Lord God. I ask for the forgiveness of any and all sin, Lord God, that would keep us, Lord God, from moving forward, that would keep us stuck, Lord God. I pray that you would free our minds, change our hearts, Lord God, lift our spirits, Lord God, and bring us to a place of understanding, Lord God. We're thanking you for today's telecast because, Lord, I know my brother, I know my sister needed to hear just what you had to say today. So if there's someone laying on the sickbed today, Father, I pray even now that you would bring healing. I pray that you would restore that body right now from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. I speak against MS, diabetes, cancer, bad back. I speak against uh, jaundice. I speak against any disease, crippling disease that is designed to, to keep your people down, hold them back, set them free, Father God, under the power of your might. And Father God, we just want to thank you today for this day, Lord, is a day we've never seen before. And we're thanking you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us already. So, Father God, have your way in our lives. Help us to surrender more and more each day. 
knowing, Lord, you're the best thing going in our lives today. We love you, Lord, and we're thanking you for another chance to get it right. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Oh, praise the Lord. You know, this, I just started this prayer line, and, and I just want to be able to get this information to you. I made mention that, you know, get that pencil and paper, and we want to be able to, let's just say, make this connection. You know, I'm thankful, and I'm just honored that God would open this door for me to do this. So, matter of fact, you can follow the credits. I'm going to give you some information about this, these numbers. The, the, the call-in number is 712-775-7085, and the access number, the access number is 741-603-POUND. The call-in number is 712-775-7085, and the call-in, the access code is 741603 pound. So we thank God for that. Why? Because we realize that God is doing a new thing with this ministry. And I'm thankful today. And, and, you know, I would be privileged and honored if, you know, you would confine it in your busy schedule because I know there's some of you probably going to work at that time, but maybe on your lunch hour, you can call that number up and you can check us out. Matter of fact, if you miss us in the morning, you can call this other number and that this is the playback number that I'm going to give you now. And that's 712 area code, 775-7089, 712-775-7089. And the access code is the same as with the call-in number, 741-603-POUND, okay? God bless you, and I just want to be able to to, let's just say, I, I just want God to use me, and I, I want to be a blessing to whomever, and I would believe that we will end up being a blessing to one another. So I'm thanking God for the, the many uh, calls that I'm already receiving, even before I started this. Uh, just from this show, I'm getting some uh, beautiful calls from people, and uh, matter of fact, I just got a beautiful call this, this, this past Sunday on Easter from a brother by the name Paul. He just blessed me real good. So, you know, if this ministry is making, uh, let's just say, uh, any, any, if it's blessing you in any way, please reach out and let us know. Send us a card. Give us a call. And like I said, if you want some prayer, you feel free to call us, and I'll be more than glad to pray with you and pray for you, okay? And also, I, 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 you know, I, I'm also still sending our daily bread out. If you want a daily bread, just give me your name, give me your, you know, your contact information, and I'll send you out a daily bread at no charge to you, and I will never, you know, move your, your information on to anyone else. It's between me and you, okay? So we just want to make that connection with you out there and let you know we love you, thanking God so much for what we're doing. And like I said, I'm hoping that this ministry and God's Got a Plan is is benefiting you, is helping you to, let's just say, work through whatever issues that we're going to, that you find yourself dealing with today. Because life is a series of ups and downs, but you want to be able to find that balance, that peace. In other words, you want to be able to live in the truth, continue to operate in the truth, and know that all things are working together for the good. Why? Because God loves you, and we love you too. God bless you now. Have yourself a good day. And keep doing what you're doing. And please share this information with your family and with your friends. If you're looking us up on YouTube, subscribe to us and share those videos that you might like, okay? Bye-bye now. God bless.